What was the relationship between Ileife and Oyo? Hello, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Please click on your subscription and notification buttons if you've not yet done so. Now, between 1600 and 1800, Oyo, one of the Yoruba states, evolved into an empire which transcended all other Yoruba principalities politically in terms of a, and in terms of a military might. The Yoruba people in Nigeria occupy the southwestern part of, uh, of that country and um, oral tradition traces their origin to Ileife and uh, they view themselves as belonging to one ethnic group because they are believed to have descended from um, Odudua, the founding father of Ileife. Odudua is said to have migrated to Ileife. Please watch the episode on uh, Ife to know more about uh, the evolution of the Yoruba, um, if you've not yet done so. It is believed that one of uh, Odua's sons, Oronyo, also known as uh, Oromiño, became the first Alafi or ruler of uh, Oyo. Also, according to oral uh, tradition, Odua is believed to have fathered the founders of major Yoruba kingdoms. According to some traditions, Ileife witnessed population expansion, which then put a strain on its resources around the 14th century. This then led to the migration of several groups of, um, out of Ileife. Um, according to other versions, pressure on the land um, co caused by expanding uh, uh, population and a great drought and famine led the people of Ife to convene a meeting during which it was decided that some people should leave. Some scholars suggest that a decision was taken at Ilefe in a place called Itaijero, which means place of uh, deliberation, in order to determine which direction each of the groups of uh, people emigrating uh, would follow. So, in, in order to keep the familial contact uh, between Ife and the new places where the migrants would settle, the children of uh, Odudua were appointed to lead each group. This account is shared by several uh, settlements of Yoruba people who point to the migration, uh, to this migration from Ife as a form of deliberate dispersal to increase the number of people and places founded by descendants of Odudua. And according to Roberto Laninho, although the exact number of kingdoms founded as a result of this exercise is usually contested, he suggests that at least 16 kingdoms are known to have been formed in various parts of Yoruba land, we then modeled themselves after Ife. While these kingdoms remained autonomous, they considered themselves kinsmen, Ebi, and um, they, they held periodic renewal of contacts uh, with Ileife, um, their, their ancestral home. The, the political administration of these Yoruba states also often had many towns, uh, villages, farmsteads, with one town serving as the capital where the Oba lived. Each town or, or village was made up of lineages headed by a Baale, who then answered to the Oba. The position of Oba of uh, towns 
funded by Ife, uh, Ife princes or descendants of uh, um, Odudua, continue to be ruled even till today by people whose ancestry can be traced to Odua. Although, as a ruler, Obas were politically supreme. However, Olanion surmises that in reality there were checks and balances which stopped them from becoming absolute monarchs. For example, an Oba could not rule single handedly but only in conjunction with the Iwarefa, a council of chiefs. The council of chiefs, in turn, consisted of two groups. One group, which was made up of heads of the various lineages, represented um, the interests of the commoners, while the second group represented the interests of the king and the royal family. It is believed that Oyo, one of such Yoruba settlements, thrived because of its favorable trading position, its natural resources, and the industry of its uh, inhabitants. Uh, as I noted earlier, the ruler of, a, uh, of Oyo is called Alafi, and various Alafins left their marks. The power of Oyo grew under one of its rulers, Alafi Orongpoto, who used the wealth derived from uh, trade to establish a cavalry force and to maintain a trained army. Even after the ascendance of Oyo, the sacred aspect of Yoruba kingship, and um, which prevented the um, uh, Alafin from becoming an autocrat, continued to prevail. Rulers were bound by rules and precedents and they were required to submit all business to councils of chiefs and officers. Uh, uh, policies could only be proclaimed under the king's name after consultation and deliberation by uh, these bodies. It is believed that the initial founders of Oyo settled in Oyoile, Kusu, and Igboho. From 1450, Oyo prospered due to trade with some northern states in Hausa land and later in the south with Portuguese sailing vessels that uh, plied the coast of West Africa. Oyo also maintained dominance over the lands which became part of its empire through the maintenance of uh, its formidable cavalry and archers which enabled it to expand to areas um, of the southwest and uh, in the savannah to the north, acquiring territory from its neighbors, the Borgu and Nupe states, uh, um, around um, 1610. The Nupe had initially conquered Odoyo around 1535 and held onto it until the Oyo kings uh, regained it around uh, 1610. Now, while some of Oyo's territorial expansion was motivated by the need to gain control of the lucrative regional trade routes along which uh, salt, um, gold, and sadly slaves were, were, were transported, Oyo was unable to overcome some groups like the Jesha, who inhabited forest areas where the Oyo cavalry could not be used effectively. And, and then there were also dangerous tsetse uh, flies, um, which prevented um, them from, um, uh, from being able to conquer um, the Jesha. They also were unable to overcome the Ekiti, who dwelt in the hills bordering the far northern stretch of uh, 
lands around them, Oyo. Now, the kingdom of Benin in the east was another formidable block to Oyo's ambitious uh, uh, trade. The, the Oyo territory, however, expanded to encompass various environments with portions of rainforest, dry forest, savanna, and mangrove swamps. Oyo benefited most from the savanna areas, which allowed easy movement and trade contacts with neighboring states. Oyo Empire traded in agricultural products like um, okra, yams, dates, palm oil, and uh, fish. And the uh, iron smelting technology was also highly developed, and this facilitated the production of iron tools and weapons, which it traded for cola, pepper, um, ivory, gold, and sadly again, like other major African states around this time, slaves. The empire also imported horses and goods from the Mediterranean, which had crossed the Sahara through camel caravans and therefore uh, moving southwards across the savanna belt and down the river Niger. N tributary kings of um, Yoruba, other Yoruba kingdoms, which were conquered by Oyo, and the provincial governors of uh, metropolitan Oyo collected tributes, which were which were, was then sent to Oyo, as well as contingents of troops to serve in the imperial army in times of major wars. These tributary kings had to pay homage to the Alafi and reaffirm their duty of allegiance during religious ceremonies which were held annually. In return for their allegiance, the Alafi protected such states from external attacks, especially from the Muslim jihadists from the north. The Alafi continued to be elected from amongst the direct descendants of Oronyo, son of Odudua, who, like I said, uh, founded um, Oyo, Oyo Ile, the original Oyo settlement. Um, and even after um, Oyo emerged as an empire, the Alafi did not have absolute power. His power was kept in check by the Oyo Messi and the Ogboni. Now, of these two sets of chiefs, the Bashong was the foremost and therefore served like a prime minister. While the Alafi could not be deposed by the Council of Chiefs, he could be compelled to commit suicide. <laughs> because if both groups of chiefs, that is the Oyomesi and the Oboni, found his conduct or policies disagreeable, or if the Alafi lost the support of the citizens of Oyo, the chiefs would ask the Bashon to present the Alafi with an empty calabash containing the eggs of parrots, which was a, symbol, a symbolic way of announcing to the Alafi that the gods, the people, and the earth had rejected him. The Alafi then had no choice but to imbibe poison. Another way in which the powers of the Alafi was kept in check was through an annual divination. The Basharun was in charge of such religious divinations, which had to be performed every year in order to determine whether or not the Alafi continued um, to retain the approval of the gods. Now, Robert Smith describes this as a form of annual performance review or spiritual vote of confidence. Um, the Basharun, who was a member of the Council of Chiefs, like I said, was there, was therefore 
he was empowered to, to influence important decisions of the Oyomisi and the Ogoni, which also meant that the Bashanru acted as constitutional in concert, in the Bashanru in concert with the Oyomisi and the Ogoni um, acted as a constitutional checks on the authority of the Alafi. Thus, the Alafi was bound to listen to their advice because ignoring their opinions could lead to the invitation for him to commit a suicide. Now, I, I'd like to digress here by talking about the role of another military strongman in the Oyo Empire, the Ari Onokakanfu which in recent times has become very highly politicized amongst the Yoruba. Now, the position of um, Are Onokakanfu was that of a field marshal who was in charge of war chiefs, known as the Esho. Although there were war chiefs, although these um, Are Onokakanfu was where they were war chiefs, they were minor chiefs. However, because the Are Onokakanfu and his warlords were expected to be completely loyal to the Alafi, while also being answerable to the Oyomisi, he was usually picked by the Oyomisi from among very lowly people. Sometimes he was even a slave. And according to Boahe, in order to further forestall the possibility of the array of Nokakamfo getting so power drunk that he would uh, constitute a threat to the Alafi due to the fact that he was in charge of the army, he was prohibited from actually entering the capital city. Unfortunately, this position has become ridiculous ridiculously politicized, so much so that the position is referred to as the Arayo Nokakanfu of Yoruba land. I believe this misconception has arisen either because the present Alafi wants to arrogate onto his office powers to which he is not traditionally entitled, or he has simply not taken the time to study the history of his position. Sadly, the Alafi has been met with little or no resistance. Nigerian politicians also, uh, Nigerian politicians and journalists also need to do some more research because they have accepted the nomenclature of Are or Nokakanfu of Yoruba land without questioning its authenticity. And they keep repeating it thereby propagating its use. I actually saw on TV a couple of um, years ago, the previous governor of Lagos State, Akiumi Ambody, who while receiving um, Ganyu Adams, the then newly appointed uh, Kakanfu, as the area of Kakanfu of Yoruba land, he then pledged his support for Adams. Now, the, the irony of this is that Lagos was never ever captured by Oyo and as such was never subject to the protection of the Oyo army headed by the Kakanfu. Even the Yoruba kingdoms which fell under Oyo and were therefore tributary to it in the past, who were tributary to, uh, who paid tribute to Oyo, or who were compelled to pay tribute to Oyo in the past, are no longer subject to Oyo. To continue to flaunt the position of the array as an array of all Yoruba is not just historically incorrect, but quite disturbing and disrespectful to areas of Yoruba land that were never under any array's uh, control. Because to do so is to give to Oyo authority which it should not have over other Yoruba kingdoms and people. Anyway, 
to get back to the history of this remarkable empire. Oyo began to subjugate the kingdom of Dahomey, which laid west of it in 1730. Under one of its rulers, Alafi Ajagbu, Oyo also got involved with the transatlantic slave trade with European merchants on Dahomey's coast through the port of Ajashe, uh, now known as uh, Port Nouveau. Some rulers of um, Oyo concentrated on amassing wealth while others advocated the use of wealth for territorial um, expansion. One uh, ruler, Alafin Abiodun, who reigned between 1770 and um, 1789, conquered his opponents in a vicious civil war and pursued a policy of economic development based primarily on the coastal um, trade in, in Ajashe with uh, European merchants. Unfortunately, in his pursuit of wealth, Abiodun neglected everything else, and this weakened the army, which had been the backbone of Oyo's power, and which previous Alafins had maintained, uh, used to maintain control. This left the kingdom vulnerable to local revolts in which a administration was tenuously maintained um, by a complex system of public service and a decline in the authority of uh, the tributary, tributary chiefs. The decline was later hastened by quarrels between one ruler and his advisors. Oyo just continued dwaddling through the, the, the later 18th century and into the 19th century when it began to lose control of its trade routes uh, to the coast. It was invaded then by the newly risen people of uh, Dahomey, whom he had captured before. And soon after 1800, substantial parts of the empire were captured by militant Fulani Muslims from the Northeast. Thanks for watching. And uh, please continue to support us by telling your contacts uh, about us um, and also keep sending your questions and comments to our community page. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. See you next time.